Hi, I'm Corey Pavin, and this is my US Open. Coming into 95, I was 35 years old. I'd won 13 tournaments on tour and had never won a major. The media and everybody out there was saying, you know, best player never won a major, which is a compliment in a way. I wanted to win a major championship. I was more than ready. And I just had to go out there and just let it happen instead of trying to make it happen. First hole was routine. The second hole, I, I kind of hit a, a poor shot. And I hit my chip, and I knew it was too hard when I hit it. And it just slammed into the pin. Mm, good break there. And those are the kind of things like holing out on five, uh, you know, the first day. It was a good break. You know, I knew I needed to do something soon. I knew at that time that, you know, I have to make this putt. Something has to happen. Or even a birdie chance. That was a really important putt to, to get a birdie on the board in the last round. Plus two, only two shots from the lead. Look at myself, I look pretty calm there. I was, I was chipping the ball great and putting well and escaping because that's a potential disaster hole. Corey Pavin for a par. These par putts in US Opens are critical. You've got to make them. And Pavin at plus two. He's still there. Left it short for birdie on 11, which, which played in when I got to 12. Great place to putt from. Boy, they're struck like a guy knows what he's doing. Still got the nerves under control. That really got me in a frame of mind like, OK, I've got a chance here. I, I still have to do some good stuff but I'm that much closer. Corey Pavin. 15th tee requires just a little fade, which is you know right up my alley. And it went down the hill in, in a perfect position. And this was a hole that you can get to. And I said, all right, this is a scoring opportunity. Yeah, I need to hit a good clean shot. I remember walking off that tee, and John Schroeder was the guy walking with us. But I asked him how I stood, you know, what's going on? And, and he told me, you're tied for the lead. So I hit those two shots up there. I mean, I couldn't have put it in a better spot. And, and my last thought on that putt was, you know, make sure you hit an, a positive putt here. You know, you don't want to leave this one short. And I just hit a great putt. And I looked over the scoreboard, and I saw the numbers change. I went to even, and Greg and Tom were one over. So that was the first time I was in the lead. And, you know, I'm getting goosebumps talking about it. That's when things changed for me a little bit. I went from calm, cool, collected to, well, I'm in the lead. I could win this tournament. You know, I'm, I'm there. Five on that hole, I was very happy with it. It's, it's such a hard hole. And that's what US Opens do. You know, par fives can be some of the hardest holes on the golf course. Haven here walking over to the 17th tee. I don't think 17 was setting up for anybody that day. Uh, winds howling left to right and down. It was impossible to get it close. That's what he's done. He's tried to turn it back into the wind. Stay on the green. Stay on the green. Stop. Well, it's not on the green, but that's okay. Just in the back fringe. When the conditions get tough like they were on Sunday, going for pins is like insane in my mind. You know, it's. You know, just try to get it up there somewhere. Uh, you know, if you make a long putt or you chip in or something, you know, that's great. But, you know, a par is a great score on any hole that day. Garman's within one to 17. And Pavin, the leader, this is approaching. Ooh, slow down, Corey. And I will say that everybody talks about the forward I hit on 18. But that putt, to me, was the most important putt of my life. Character. It kept Greg at arm's length and it just put me in a good spot to play 18. I wanted to hit that fairway. That was absolute key. I didn't care if I hit it 210 yards off the tee. I wanted to hit in the fairway. And maybe I hit it about 225, I don't know. But it was in the fairway, and I just executed a, a, a drive that I wanted to hit. It's gonna be a long second shot. You know, the putt I made on 17 allowed me to play 18 a little more conservatively off the tee, and, you know, now we're just trying to make sure we get the yardage right, uh, make good decisions here. Haven 
contemplating this approach yet. I'm pretty sure that a, a four goes a long, long way here, and, and it'll probably win me the tournament. I'm not positive. He's got a wood out. But I know a four won't lose me the tournament. The main thing he wants to do here is not really miss it above the hole. Probably his main concern now is just to make a good solid swing, good contact, and good thoughts. Beautifully struck there, right at the flag. Watch out for this one. This is a shot of his life. I raised my, my, my hands and I was like, oh my gosh, I just showed a lot of emotion, you know? So I just tried to calm down. You know, I kind of squatted down and, and said a little prayer. You know, just whatever happens, happens. And, and then kind of got up and, and walked up to the green. I remember walking up and, and the crowd cheering, and then the cheer turned into Corey, Corey, and I'm like, wow, that's never happened before. But I was so appreciative of it, you know, and it, I just kind of turned, you know, took my hat off and, and waved, because it was kind of cool. But then, you know, I got up on the green and it was, you know, down to business. I knew Greg was on 16, and you know, I was a little concerned that he was gonna birdie 16. But I didn't know what he was doing. I'm going right at the flag. And by the time I hit my putt, he still had not finished 16. And, you know, to be honest with you, I knew if I made that putt, I was going to win. And I got up and I just hit the worst putt I hit all week. I looked up like everybody out there that's watching this uh, has done. You know, you want to see what happens and you look up and, you know, I left the door open. It was kind of my first thought. You know, it was just barely, barely open, but it was open. And, and I was a little upset at myself that I did that. You know, and I'm like, you know, shaking and trying to, you know, <laughs> keep control of my body. And, you know, I tapped it in. Well, par for Pavin. He finishes at 68 today. And I thought I was in a pretty good spot, because I think when I was walking off that green, I knew that Greg had parred 16. He finishes at 68 today in position to win his first major championship. But I didn't want to let myself even start thinking that I was going to win. You know, Greg had a great drive down the fairway, and he had to hold the shot to, to tie me. And the second he hit it, I could tell that he started it at the hole. And there's no way, with the wind blowing 20 miles an hour right to left, that it's going to hold its line. Corey Pavin, U.S. Open champion. Oh, thanks. Does that sound uh, good? Oh, that sounds so awesome. I can't <laughs> even tell you how good that sounds to me. <laughs> Could have come up with something better, but uh, I didn't really care at that point. I was just glad to have won. All of those folks that asked you over and over again, or you were reminded constantly <laughs> the greatest player not to have won a major, yeah. that's all gone. Thank God, I'm, uh, I was tired of hearing those questions. When I was a kid practicing, you know, I would go out and, and get on the practice team. I'd have a six iron in my hand and said, you know, I've got a, a good shot here and, and I'll win the U.S. Open. Uh, and it turned out it wasn't a six iron, it was a four wood. But that was kind of my dream as a kid, was to have that shot on the last hole. Um, I was running on mostly all cylinders that week. I played one of the best tournaments of my life. And I was patient uh, through my career uh, and patient that day as well. And to put that all together uh, under that pressure, under those lights, I was very proud of, of winning the US Open.